emotional support comfort chicken. This is the one we're making here in the video. This is Queenie. Queenie is looking forward to showing you all of her stuff, including all of her stuffing. <laughs> Let's get started on this fun project. This emotional support comfort chicken made on a circular knitting machine in three pieces and a little tiny bit of crochet. Hello and welcome. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with my emotional support comfort chicken. This chicken is uh, inspired by the trending, huge trending, emotional support chicken uh, knitted project, all done on regular needles. I wanted something that we could do on our circular knitting machines. Now, this first one right here, this is Olivia, and she was knitted on the Centro 48 needle circular knitting machine. This is Rosie, and she was knitted on the 46 needle Addy Express King Size. Uh, you can knit this on anything that will allow you to have 41 needles in use. All right, so Rosie here and Olivia were both done with three pieces. So you have a piece that goes from the top of the head to the back right here. You have a piece that goes from the middle of the back out to the tail. And then you have a piece that goes from under the chin all the way down the belly to under the tail right here i am going to do this with this is karen simply simply soft this one is called speckle and it is himalayan salt so it's kind of that uh, pink sea salt it's real pretty i've had this for quite a while so <laughs> this is going to be for the all of the stuff that's on the back here so the head to the back and all the way to the tail. Then for the belly, I'm going to use the Karen Simply Soft and this is off-white or kind of a cream color. Check the list in the description for all of the tools that I'm using. There's links to the knitting machines and some of my little tools. Any links, they're affiliate. I earn a small, a small commission. We are casting on nine needles so one two three four five six seven eight nine then under that finger right there if you need help with knitting panels on your circular knitting machine check out my video uh, it's in the i card and it's also linked down below in the description on how to make perfect panels and how to get straight edges it is possible so you need it to catch this yarn right here and you want to make sure that it pulls all the way down see that right here and is looped across if you don't see anything on that needle right there or on that uh, space just back it up do it again reset my counter and now I am going to knit two rows down and back, no increases. Make sure that the stitch is dropped all the way down and back up. That's down and back, so that's two. Now we are going to start increasing one stitch so we stitch this was our last stitch that was completed we're stitching past by one complete set so a set is two of these fingers and that middle then we're going to come back make sure that that needle catches go all the way down right here make sure this drops all the way see how it's dropped all the way down we're gonna go one pass, so one full needle passed. And we are increasing just like this until we have 41 needles. So every single time I come back to the right, I am going to 
increase one full needle, go back all the way to the end, make sure that drop down, and increase. Oh, I've got a funny squeak in my handle right now. And increase. I'm going to do that until I have 41 stitches on here, and then I'll be back. All right, I've just cast on number 41. I'm going to do five rows of just plain knitting now. Waste yarn cast off. And I might choose to finish my edges with a, a contrasting color. So instead of using the same color, I might use a contrasting color, which will give me a little stripe back here at the edge of her wing. I kind of like that idea. Waste yarn cast off is just cutting your main yarn and using some other color that is obviously different from your from your main working yarn. Now you could choose to uh, get your edges finished right away or wait until you have all your pieces. I'm going to wait until I have all my pieces so I can show you how I finish these edges. But so this one, you actually need to do a waste yarn, cast on, a zip strip, work your piece, and then waste yarn cast off. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. When you're coming back across here, whoops, see, you have to make sure that you catch that stitch. If you don't catch it, you won't have all 21 stitches. So right there, see how it just caught and pulled it down in. That sets you up for all of your other stitches to work, work right, for your edges to be correct. Now I'm going to do uh, four or five rows of waist yarn. Looks like I'm doing four. We're going to put one zip strip in. This is a single piece of yarn that makes it easy to pull off the waist yarn after you have bound your edge. And if you want your counts to match with mine, you're going to need to make sure that you reset your counter right now. Now we're going to put on our main yarn. Make sure and leave a bit of yarn to the inside so that you have already attached yarn to do your crochet bind off. Now we're going to do five rows. So that's knit five rows. Now we're going back on row six. So we're coming up on row six right now. At the end of row six, we're going to increase one. We're going to go back across. This is row seven. Increase one. And we are doing an increase at the end of every row until we're at 41 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead, just like 
the first piece that we did. I'm just going to go ahead and increase, knit across, increase, knit across, back here when I'm all the way around to 41 stitches. Forty-one. All right, forty-one. Now we're going to knit ten rows straight. Now we're going to do a waist yarn cast off. I want to leave enough yarn inside to bind my edge. The binding of the edge is just with a simple single crochet bind off. All right, just a different color than I've used for anything else. There we go. So this is the tail and the back. And I'll explain in just a minute why I do the head and the back and the tail and the back in two pieces. But first off, we're going to get the chest done for the gusset piece that goes from under the chin all the way down the neck, the chest, the tummy, and up underneath of the tail right here. We cast on seven needles to start off with. Five rows. Seven, six, seven are my increases, so that's right. That was the increases. Eight, nine, knit. Thirty-four is increase. Thirty-five is increase. All right, I'm at thirty-six. On my counter here and now I start knit just straight knitting rows until I hit 70. Just straight knitting making sure that I keep my edges tidy. Other than that I'll see you back here when I've got to 70 and I'm casting off. Alrighty so this piece here we are doing a long tail cast off. Thread your yarn onto the darning needle Run your knitting machine all the way around and then pick up the stitches. The yarn is pulled through and now we can get the knitting machine out of the way. All right, I've got some gold colored yarn here. This is for the beak. The pattern is with all of the other pattern steps. I have a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and I am going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm going to go to the second chain from the hook and do single crochet and then i'm going to single crochet in every chain across so that'll be nine single crochets so that's two three four five six seven 
8, 9. I am not doing a turning chain. I am just turning. And then I'm going to go into this first, you see where these little holes are right here, that below the stitch. I'm going to go into that little hole right there. I'm going to poke in, grab the yarn over and pull up. Don't finish this stitch because we're doing a decrease. So then I'm going to go to the next stitch, that next hole right there reach through, pull up. Now I have three loops. I'm going to wrap over and pull through all three loops. Now I'm going to single crochet five, one, two, three, four, five. You should have two stitches left. You have this stitch right here and the end. We're going to decrease again. So I'm going to go in the first one, pull up, go in that last one. The last one can be a little tricky. Just make sure you go under both of those legs. See there's two legs right here. Wrap over, pull through. As long as you've got three loops on your hook here, you're good. Wrap over, pull through. Do not make a chain to turn. We're going to decrease again. We're going in the first one, pull up. In the second one, pull up. Wrap over, pull through all three loops. You're going to single crochet three. One, two, three. Then you're going to go in and under that last one. Remember those two legs. Make sure you go under both of those legs and pull through. And now I'm turning. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going in the first one, in the second one, wrap over, pull through three. Now I only have three stitches left, so I'm going to go single crochet in the middle, just one, and then I'm going to decrease again. One, two, wrap over, pull through, turn. And I am going to do this last decrease where I go in one, in two, pull through, and then this very last stitch here, I am going to do a single crochet. And that just helps me to end up with a more symmetrical shape here. And look at that. We've got this lovely little beak right there. Lovely little beak. I'm going to cut my yarn off pull it through the loop to finish. That's because if you don't finish your stitch here, it, it can end up pulling out. So you want to make sure you finish it by pulling through and snugging down. Now we can run this yarn back down to the inside. You want to do that just by Actually, no, we're going to, this is the one I'm going to run down to the inside. So my starting yarn, I'm going to weave into the inside. That's the inside. And I'm just going to work it under several of the loop. See, there's little bits here. I love this mustardy color. This is the color that I used for my hexagon sweater that ended up looking very, uh, very much like a retro swing coat. I was really happy with that one. It's on the channel. If you like this color, it's a lot of this color. So now from the point right here, we're going to close this triangle down that 
down that open side. You see? So I'm going to just grab that same yarn that's already there. So make sure that you leave enough yarn to do your to do your stitching. I'm folding it here, and these are your uh, decrease edges. So I'm just folding it, and basically I'm catching a stitch on each side, just wherever I can get the needle to go under and make it look tidy. You don't want it to be all um, all bumpy and globby. You, you want it to be smooth. This is the underside of the beak. Finishing up this little beak. Just stitching through those edges. Just to give us a nice, tidy, finished beak. This is still, this is like a little cone. So I can reach inside and I can run my, my yarn under a couple stitches on the inside. And trim it off. I'm leaving kind of a longish tail so that way it just shoves inside. You don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and get the waddle and the crown made also. So that way, when we're doing the sewing, we can just sew everything together all at once. If you don't want to crochet, you could just get some red felt and cut yourself a couple roundy bits that are attached with a point and stitch it on and you'd have a waddle. And you could sew, take a piece of red felt and cut it into the crown shape and either glue it or sew it on. I'm going to use crochet because that makes me happy. The waddle, you're going to make two loop or two chain, one, two. The second chain from the hook, you're going to Go under, pull through, and pull through the loop. That's a slip stitch. Then you're going to go into that same chain. All these stitches are worked in the same chain, and you're going to make a single crochet. So that's pull up one and pull through. Now I'm going to wrap over, go in that same chain, wrap over, pull through. I have three loops on here. I am actually doing a half double crochet. I just pull through all three of those loops. Next stitch is wrap over in the that little chain, pull up. I have three on here, but now I'm doing a double crochet. So I'm going to wrap over, pull through two, wrap over, pull through two. The next two stitches are trebles or triples. You're going to wrap over, wrap over, go in that hole, wrap the yarn. I now have four loops on my hook. I'm going to wrap over, pull through two, wrap over, pull through two, wrap over, pull through two. And that's why it's called a treble because you've done three wraps. See that? One, two, three. We're going to do it again. One, two, in the hole, and grab four loops on your hook wrap over pull through two once wrap over pull through two twice wrap over pull through two third time now wrap once we're going to do the opposite of how we worked up to those trebles now we're going to do a double A half double, pull through all three, a single, reach through, pull through two, and a slip stitch, which is just 
slipping through. Then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. You see how this is making a sweet little waddle. Now on this one, you can actually tighten up that loop with your tail. So that's all nice and tightened up. We're going to go into the second chain from the hook and do exactly the same thing again. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, triple crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, all through, single, slip stitch, and then to finish it off, I'm going to go around that single chain in the middle and slip stitch on both sides of it there. And you see how we've got this cute little waddle. And now I'm just going to cut my, my tail a little bit long. I'm going to use this end to, to sew the whole thing on. I'm going ahead and just tying those two little ends together. My starting end and my finishing end. And then I'm going to, this little short tail, I'm going to go ahead and just run that yarn through the waddle same color it's not going to get it's not going to be too obtrusive like that and just pull it through make sure i've pulled up all the pulled up all the slack on it and then i can trim it off so now the waddle is done we're ready to go Ready to be stitched on. So the beak is ready, the waddle is ready, and now we're going to get the crown. The crown is super we're simple. We're going to chain nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we're going to slip stitch in the second chain. We're going to half double crochet in the third chain. slip stitch in the fourth chain, do that all the way across, and half double crochet in the fifth chain, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet. That's, that's the ninth chain right there. Then we're going to not, we're not going to do a turning chain. We're just going to pull the loop up a little bit so we have room to turn. Then we are going to do a slip stitch. And a half double crochet. And we're going to do that across the whole thing. That's going to give us a sweet little roughly crown without being too you know in your face it's not a boy it's not a rooster this is a chicken it's a hen slip and the last one is a half double finish that off. I always cut my yarn from outside of that loop. If I want to be able to use that yarn, I don't want to accidentally cut it off 
and when I pull it out, I'm left with just a tiny little piece. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. So there is our roughly bit of the crown. That is the top. This smoother edge down here where it was the bottom is the bottom. I'm going to run my yarn down the edge. Through the yarn on the edge here that kind of rounds it off just a little bit. And then I'm going to come across and I'm just going to do sort of a little whip stitch across the bottom. That is going to give us a bit of a gather on that and shape. I'm going to tie the knot here. So it stays in shape and then I'm going to leave that tail on there for for stitching it on. But there we go. So now we're going to bind off those edges and this one was the one that I did did remember to leave a long piece of yarn on so I'm going to use it to show you. See this loop right here? I'm going to pick it up, wrap over and pull through. All right now I've got a slip stitch. And I'm going to do a, just a standard single crochet through all of the last loops. Really easy to see which one is the last loop. It's sandwiched between the waist yarn. So right here, go under, wrap over, pull through, wrap over, pull through. That's all it is. Go under, wrap over, pull through, wrap over, pull through. That's a single crochet. Under, wrap over, pull through, wrap over, pull through. I'm going to do that on anything that has waste yarn and I'll meet you back here with all of the pieces finished off on the edges. So this one's going to be a little bit different. I am actually going to do my bind off and then I want to do an extra, an extra row of crochet to give her a little bit of a frill going across her back. Slip stitch in the first space, two half double crochets, one, two, in the next space, one slip stitch in the next one, two half double crochets, one, two, slip stitch in the next chain, two half double crochets in the next chain. I'm going to do that all the way across. So two half double crochets in the chain, slip stitch in the next one, all on that bind off single crochet. And I'm just going to these last two stitches are just going to be slip stitches because I want to finish it. There we go. Ah. So now we're going to go ahead and remove all of the waste yarn. Find it easy to do this. This was the cast off edge. I like this kind of buttery cream color. Okay. I'm just going to model on here. Look how cute that's going to be. Actually, <laughs> if I wanted to make coats for my, for my chickens or capes, oh gosh, I could make capes for my chickens. Look how cute that would be. <laughs> okay, I ha I have to leave this part in. You're you're just going to have to see this. And this up here is a long tail cast on edge. And that is how we tighten up the top of the head like that. Then the beak will go in like here. 
the crown will go on up here. The wattle will come in down like that. Oopsie. Then this needs to have all of its waste yarn removed also. So here we go. This is the edge that had the, the extra zip strip to make it easy to remove. Just make sure that you have no knot on your ends. We're going to pull that zip strip out like that. And boom, that came off so easy. This is the tail. Now I promised you I would explain why I do this in two pieces. I think you're going to be able to see. One, it gives you the ability to have detail. Two, it's a lot easier to increase the stitches than it is to decrease stitches. And three, I can shape. See how I can how I could do that? I could shape this like that. See how much it's tucked in up here, but it's all the way down to the point down here. So I can adjust how much of the back edge of her body is inside. And that helps to bring the tail up and the head up. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stitched together. And I need a couple of my little clips. I use quilters clips and I use stitch markers. So quilters clips are great for these corner edges where it's really thick. Like that. But then up here, it's a little bit trickier to keep it stitched or to keep the, the binder clips attached. Let's just get those, all this yarn, just get it all straightened out. Stitch all along under, under that bind off edge. And I may go ahead and put that same pattern on the tail. I like that idea. But to start off with, we're going to get this stitched right here with the same yarn and if you look at this i have a long piece of that yarn still attached so i'm going to use that Just want to get all of my bits and pieces tidy so you can see. So right now, this is the head end over here on my left. This is her pretty little, her pretty little ruffle on her back. I put just, let's see, like this. That's just going to keep keep it tidy, keep it keep it from rolling up on me while I'm stitching. I'm going to do just a plain running stitch to attach this, and then I will flip it over and do a stitch that is just going through the back loops. So I want to get this tied off here on the corner though, going through the bottom layer through the top layer. There, those are attached. And now I'm just going to go up and down. I'm gonna do this going down one way and then flip it over and we'll get the other side stitched down.
All right, we're going to flip this over. So yes, I could have done this where I increased up to this point, went straight for a period of time, but then I would have had to do decreases on the ends. I hate doing decreases. <laughs> so I'm going to just, I will always just do increases if I can possibly help it. So coming through these ends here, I'm going to tie. Reason why I'm tying these ends together here is that it's going to keep me from, when I'm pulling on this yarn, it's going to keep me from gathering this edge that I already did. Now this time I'm going through the edge, cast off on the back piece, and I'm just going to pick up a loop on the back. I am not doing anything other than that. I'm going, I'm going under a loop of the cast on and I'm picking up a loop of the back side of the stocking net stitch. And I'm just doing a whip stitch going through those two like that. It's going to just keep that from getting bunched up and curling and causing weird, um, weird lumps in the back of my chicken. Through that last edge, through the edge, over that edge, tie it off a little bit farther in. and run it through between those layers. <clears throat> Gives you a place to bury those threads. So I am going to go ahead and do my little extra stitching, put a little ruffle on the tail feathers. You don't have to, just something I'm gonna do. Well, there we go. So now we've got the tail. The back going up to the head when we put the safety eyes on we are going to insert a piece of felt inside the head so that the safety eyes have something to hold on to so I'm gonna put that like that pull that down and I'm gonna grab a couple safety eyes those two and for the top of the head because this is a, uh, this was just a long tail cast on for that edge. You can just draw string it down nice and nice and snug. It's sort of the forehead, the front above the beak. I'm going to just run back through just like doing a hat, except that it doesn't go all the knitting doesn't go all the way around, but your stitching does just like that. And then I'm going to join those two front bits just a little bit more, a couple extra stitches. This is the yarn I'm going to use to sew in the beak, but I want to get the eyes on first. So I'm taking, taking this piece of felt and I'm laying it in so that I can kind of figure out where, where my eyes go. One of the only things you really have to make sure of when you're making, uh, making chickens, if the eyes aren't lined up with the beak, the chicken can't eat because they can't see what their, what their, where their beak is going. So here, like this, the eye is, if the eye is here and the beak is here, that works. All right. So what I like to do is just poke the, 
poke the eye through and sort of line up on my felt, pushing it down a little. And I just give a tiny little nip so I can poke that safety eye through the felt. Then I can put the washer over the top of that and make sure that you're using the right size washers. They should be tight. When you're pushing it down, it shouldn't just pop loose. So that's one eye. And the other eye is going to go on this side, right about there. And if her eyes aren't completely symmetrical, whoop de do Don't worry about it. So, lined up my, line up that. Make sure you leave a little slack on your felt on the inside so that when you're putting the stuffing in, the stuffing can go with the felt. Just snip that ever so slightly. Not a huge, not a huge hole. You don't want this to come through the felt. And snap down. Okay, we're starting to get a chicken. So now I need to find my beak right here. I need to find the bottom edge. That was the seam that goes on the bottom. And now I'm going to just sort of sandwich the beak in, however it makes sense to me, lining it up with her eyes. Okay. And I'm holding it flat together like this, but I'm only stitching through one layer all the way around. So I'm going into the, into the yarn on the beak, and then I'm picking up a stitch. on the side of the face, going into the yarn on the beak, up a stitch on the side of the face, and I'm working my way around. This is very soft yarn. So you will probably wanna do a couple rounds of stitching. There, I'm gonna go across under the beak and across. I would suggest using a, I mean, this yarn is so soft. It's going, it's lovely. It's cushy. Um, it's a little bit lightweight for this project, but it was the yarn I had. So, you know, the yarn you have is better than yarn you don't have and you have to wait around for. So I'm going to make it do. But if you want it to be a little bit heavier, you probably want to make sure that your yarn is a true four worsted. This says it's four, but I'd say this is the Karen Sim Simply Soft is more like a three and a half. It's really soft. And it makes a kind of looser stitch. But as you can see, we can stitch all the way around. You are going to see a little bit of the stuffing through this, I think. And if you notice here, the beak is still open. I did not sew the beak together. That allows it to have a little bit of a uh, little bit more character. And I'm just going to give her a couple more stitches here. Kind of going around a stitch underneath. Going up. Going under a couple bars. And then 
following this this next stitch here i'm going to go under that one and come back just because this gives us a little bit more stability here the waddle's going to get stitched on so there's going to be a little more even still but i want to make sure that this area is secure the we're also going to be stitching the gusset in here i'm not putting the waddle and the gusset the um crown on until we are just doing our final touches so that's there but That piece goes to the inside. That piece is there. And now we're going to take our gusset and get it lined up. And that's going to come along here underneath of her chin, across her belly, and up to underneath of the tail. You notice it doesn't go all the way to the edge. That's because I want the tail to stick out. She's going to be like that. And isn't that going to be so adorable? And stitch this to my best ability. I am doing it inside out as much as I can and then I'll flip it when I can't be inside out anymore. It just makes for a tidier stitch I think. So I'm going to come up here. Ah now now these chickens here you've got some changes in texture. You've got the stock in its side on the outside for the back and uh, the head and all of that. And then for the belly and the neck, we've got the reverse stockinette side. All you're doing is flipping your piece so that you're not matching. We're going to do this stitching together so that the stockinette side ends up on the outside. So to do that, you're going to want to lay the reverse stockinette side down against the outside of your chicken. And I'm just going to grab a couple of these springy clips and get this lined up. I'm going to do a running back stitch to stitch this and flipping it inside out like this. I am going to make sure that my edges are completely flipped up because I want to end up with like a single row, about a quarter inch um, seam allowance. Queenie is, I think she's going to be the queen of the coop, queen of the flock. She just has a regal feel to her. So I'm doing a back stitch through this edge here. And I'm just coming up, then going behind the stitch, and then coming up in front of it. Just like embroidery or hand sewing, going through the front, through that back layer, across, and coming up in front. This is going to give me a nice sturdy stitch, and it doesn't show through the front through the outside because all of my stitching is on the inside just like if you were sewing together a regular toy with fabric and you would have a seam allowance on the inside that's kind of what i'm doing here i am i am using one whole row basically as my seam allowance there Coming back up. This is actually a very fast way to get this stitched together. And 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I've already stitched the other side. So that way, when I'm done with this, this row or this side, we can flip it outside, you know, inside out, right side out. We can flip it right side out after I'm done stitching this all the way up to the under the chin. So I'm going to just keep doing this all the way up to that point, And I'll meet you back when I have finished this part top bit where the where it's gathered i'm just going to run this yarn this needle through those stitches also so between the two it's connected and then come back across tie that off leave these tails kind of long now we're going to flip this the right side out and see how we did there's the head there's the chest and the neck Ooh. So that looks really tidy. Before we stuff, I'm going to go ahead and stitch on the waddle. There's already the yarn here. And I'm going to go right in here at the base. I'm going to pick up some of that uh, gathered up neck bit and then up through here. Stitch back through the edge. Stitch back through the waddle itself. Stitch back through the neck. Stitch back through the waddle. I just want to get this really attached so it can't come loose. I think that's actually pretty good. I'm going to stitch across, come back through one more time. Got those little flaky bits there, little fringy bits. I'm just going to trim those. And we're going to run this to the inside. Since we don't have any stuffing in our way right now, here we go. And stitch it off. There's enough pieces of thread yarn on the inside. I'm just going to tie it off. Run it back to the outside. Now the crown I'm not going to put on until I've got her stuffed. So we're going to grab some stuffing and start getting her to shape. So I just have some uh, polyfill fiber fill stuffing. Super soft, lightweight, all that good stuff. And I'm going to grab just a big old couple handfuls. I'm going to stuff her pretty full, but I'm not going to stuff her really hard. If you understand what I mean there. So we're going to go like this. We're going to take just a small wad that's going to go all the way up to her head. You want to get that stuffed pretty well. Like that. Okay. Then we're going to take the next wad of it here. And we're going to bring it in and 
Get it up into the back of her head and start filling out her chest. Next one. Start filling out her breast. She's looking like a chicken. All right, we're gonna go like this. Get her back end all floofed. I think that's good. So now the back end of her, we have the drawstring. that we're going to use for closing up. I do need to get a little bit more stuffing in here. But look at her. Oh, she is the queen. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna take just this little bit more stuffing, really get her, her back end pushed in like this. Draw it down. Now at this moment, she might be a little misshapen and we will be, we'll be pushing on her and, and sculpting her into shape. So when you're going back through, you don't want to go back through without um, catching on another piece of yarn through around here. And then I can go back through all of that gather those gather bits. You just don't want to go back through the gather bits without catching something else. Because if you do go back without catching anything else, you will be just unstringing all of your, your stitches and you don't want that to happen. So we've gone across. I'm going to catch on another stitch out here. And then I'm going to go back through. So here I am from the future. I had to go and open up the chicken back to this point so that I could put a bag of poly pellets. She needed a little bit of weight. She weighs basically almost nothing. So uh, to get her to sit up nicely on the table or in a basket or on a shelf, I needed her to have a little bit more weight. So Queenie, put on a few ounces. I took a muslin bag, filled it with poly pellets, tied it and sewed it shut, and then put it into the back end of Queenie. I'm putting about four or five ounces of poly pellets in this bag. I'm putting it inside the stuffing, making sure that it's completely surrounded. And then I'm gonna close her up just like you would normally do when you're finishing the chicken. Pull it down snug. I'm going to tie that off just by stitching around it a couple times and stitch through like that. Now I can use this same yarn to come from the inside so it's kind of lined up in the middle yeah lined up in the middle I'm going to use this to stitch along this along these stitches so I'm going to go pick up a stitch pick up a stitch but I am going to come back through the center there. So now we're going to pick up a stitch, pick up a stitch, close it however you want. I'm going to try and match this up some, but it's not necessarily going to be matched up perfectly. Match it up however it works for you. Stitch it together however it works for you. This is your chicken. Now, like I said before, the Karen Simply Soft is a lovely yarn for making hats and stuffed toys, but it's best when you're doing it 
with a double layer. This is not a double layer toy. So she's a little thin. The fabric is thin. It's okay. You know, she's beautiful and she is going to be the queen of my, my flock. Like that. Get her, her little crown on. Because Queenie needs a crown. Like this. We're just going to stitch this on. Basically a whip stitch going around through it. And we're going to go down and back. So we'll, we'll go both ways. We'll go towards the front and then we'll turn around and we'll come back towards the back. So all the way to that front point. Now we're going to come through here, come down in front. So it's snugged in nice and tight. And then I'm going to come up. I'm making a little red junction point here. Come back up. See how that's connected here now? And then work my way back oh. through there and just mush, squish, and pull it through. Here's my current flock of emotional support chickens. They have personality. They are definitely squishy and huggable. The size here is approximately from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail is approximately 13 inches. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching Queenie get made. This is my emotional support comfort chicken, totally my own pattern. And I am really tickled with how it has evolved. If you enjoyed this, make sure to let me know. Either leave a comment here on the channel or a comment on the blog post where the full pattern is. If you want a downloadable version of the full pattern, make sure and join us over on Patreon. Did, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends. Make sure that you go out and do something creative. Make yourself an emotional support chicken. Yes. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you back here again soon. Remember, do something creative and be kind. Bye-bye.